So uh, thank you very much and uh, welcome to this roundtable discussion on teacher education and training in the age of AI. Now, we've been talking a lot already about teacher education and training yesterday. Um, we've heard from the first keynote speaker, Professor Farah Meggs, about the lack of training, um, students often knowing more about AI than teachers, and that we should start with what teachers already know, media literacy. Um, we've heard in the policy exchange about large-scale initiatives on teacher training in Flanders and in Portugal. Uh, and in the parallel session, teacher education training was also a prominent theme. And now we've heard this quite dystopian picture of our digital world, and the teachers ultimately have to deal with this in the classroom, telling their students how to, yes, face these corporate giants. So, and I think the fact that we are talking a lot about teacher education and training is because, in a way, it feels like over the past decade we've been going from one crisis to another when it comes to what we expect of our teachers and what we expect of them to deal with in the classroom. Um, in the last few years, in many European countries, teachers have been uh, integrating refugee children in their classroom, millions of refugee children in their classroom, most of them who did not speak the language of instruction. And during COVID times, teachers had to suddenly teach online, often without adequate infrastructure or adequate support and training. And now, with the rise of AI, um, teachers are all of a sudden faced with a technology that, of course, offers opportunities for them on the one hand, but also raises some really serious questions about the role of teachers and how we organize teaching and learning and assessment in our education systems. And all of this is happening on a backdrop of a huge crisis of teacher shortages. If you look at the newest data from the European Commission Education and Training Monitor, which was published last week, there's quite a depressing picture in many, uh, in many countries regarding teacher shortages. Too few students or too few young people are signing up for initial teacher education. Too many young teachers are dropping out of schools, out of teaching. And too many old teachers are going into retirement. So to borrow from the keynote speaker yesterday, uh, maybe it is time to panic, not necessarily about AI, but about the situation of our teachers. And back in 2021, before ChatGPT became a, became a phenomenon, uh, UNESCO actually published some guidelines for policymakers on AI and education, which stated, and I quote here, it is essential we develop and deliver training programs on the required skills before deploying AI platforms or tools and prevent situations where teachers are left unable to conduct their role. Now, we might not be deploying AI platforms formally, but they are out there. They are being used by students and by teachers. So in many ways, we are exactly in a, this situation that UNESCO was warning about, where we're playing catch up with the technological developments and where the teachers are left by themselves trying to figure out how to deal with it in the classroom. So in light of all of this, we definitely need to talk more and more deeply about how we can adequately support our teachers. And while there are many different ways to do this, and there was an excellent panel at the European Education Summit last week on this as well, teacher education training is definitely one of the first things that comes to mind when we think about supporting our teachers. So on the one hand, preparing them for preparing new teachers for what is to come once they enter their schools but also thinking about how we continuously develop the competencies of the teachers already in service. So that is why at this roundtable uh, we're going to be talking about teacher education and training and how we can adequately address the needs of teachers in these transformative times of AI. So I'm very delighted to welcome to this panel a mix of practitioners from teacher education and training, as well as researchers who have investigated uh, how the role of uh, the teacher is changing and the needs that they have in light of the changes brought about by AI. By AI. So it's a pleasure to welcome to this panel Jessica Newind Gori. Jessica is a researcher and teacher trainer at Indira. Uh, you've been involved in many different projects on AI and education, and you've also been a co author of the seven reports about AI and education on the European Digital Education Hub. Thank you for joining us here. We are also joined here by Ana Maria Hernandez Martinez, who works at the National Institute of Technolo of, for Educational Technologies and Teacher Training of the Spanish Ministry of Education. And you've also been involved in many different projects around teacher training, including e-training. 
Then we also have with us here Noisa Pedro, who is professor at the Institute of Education of the University of Lisbon, um, where you teach future teachers in your dedicated future classroom lab. And finally, we have with us here Manuel Gentile, a researcher at the Institute of Educational Technology of National Research Council of Italy, who has been investigating questions related to AI and the role of teachers and teacher training. So thank you very much and welcome. I'd like to start with a question to you, Manuel. Um, thinking a bit more about the teacher's role and perceptions of teachers. So if we want to talk about how education and teacher education and training should or should not change, then we first need to understand how the role of teachers will change with the rise of AI in the classroom. So I understand you've done research on this exact yeah. question. So can you tell us a bit more about how do you think the role of teachers will change in yeah. the coming years? Of course. Of course, thank you for the invitation. It's a pleasure to be here. And uh, we can uh, say, here we go again, uh, the relationship between uh, teacher and technology is uh, a never-ending story. So uh, starting from uh, 80s, we had uh, at least four main uh, re digital revolution. Uh, the introduction of personal computer, uh, internet, social media, uh, mobile computing, and now, uh, there is a new actor, uh, artificial intelligence. And every time uh, we uh, figure out what could be the new uh, figure, uh, perspective, the, the new role of teacher, and we ask a teacher to uh, uh, adapt and change their teaching practice according to the last innovation. Um, sometimes, Often, uh, let me say, we use a term like uh, mediator or facil facilitator to describe the new role of teacher. Uh, personally, I uh, don't like this kind of, of seeing the, 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 the role of teacher. And uh, uh, moreover, uh, if we uh, refer to the, uh, the AI innovation, uh, there is a, a mainstream of, of fear uh, that uh, question uh, deeply, uh, profoundly, the role of teacher and uh, uh, also the, the real necessity of the teacher itself is uh, uh, called in question sometimes. And uh, uh, I think that uh, uh, we uh, have to, to start from, from the evidence. And we uh, uh, conducted a study, uh, a research study, uh, about the, the paradigm shift of, of the teacher role. And from the, our research, uh, two main uh, points emerge uh, clearly. Uh, as Mark said before, uh, I think that in this uh, era of uh, confusion, of uh, uh, things that rapidly change, uh, the, the teacher role emerges as cent um, more central than, than before as uh, a guidance and uh, uh, for students in order to uh, understand and decode the complexity of this, of this world. And from the other side, uh, we uh, have some cues from the research that uh, um, quite all the aspects of the teaching activity uh, could be touched by, by AI, not only generative AI, but also the old-fashioned AI. So uh, I uh, refer to uh, teacher-student interaction, uh, teaching strategy, uh, teaching content, uh, student assessment and monitoring, and also, of course, teacher uh, development, uh, professional development. So uh, I think that there is a big opportunity for, for teacher to uh, free up space for uh, taking care of what uh, is the central task in the teaching activity, so taking care of the, of the person, of the student, of uh, their emotional, affective, and social growth. So uh, it is a big opportunity we have, to, uh, we have to, to catch, and I think we have to create the condition to uh, allow teacher to get this opportunity. Great. Many thanks, uh, Manuel. I wonder, we've been talking in the past, and you've alluded to it often, about the changing role of the teacher. Um, and we've said it will happen in the next few years, but it rarely has happened. The role of the teacher has actually yeah. <laughs> been quite consistent. Um, why do you think it's different, or is it different this time? Yeah, it's different. I think it's, uh, it's uh, everyone uh, can see how pervasive could be this kind of technology, and uh, specifically generative AI. 
Uh, I think that uh, as a researcher in technology, uh, educational technology, uh, uh, too often we uh, uh, analyze just uh, uh, the technology that we design that could be uh, uh, educational by uh, by design, but I think that we have to look at uh, the rest of technology. I called in the slide "parative technology," that are technology that are not designed for educational uh, purpose, but uh, they could have uh, a, a big impact of uh, learning and teaching process. So. Uh, the level of uh, uh, pervasiveness of this kind of technology is too uh, is so high that we need to uh, to cope with uh, this kind of technology. And uh, this is the Great, reason. Many thanks, uh, Jessica. Can I bring you here? Uh, do you agree with Manuel on this? Um, what's your position here about the changing role of the teacher? Um, I think that. Um, at the very least, development. Uh, I think. One point is uh, why uh, we, everyone was talking about ChatGPT and the use of this technology in the classroom because also it was very easy to access and almost needed to use it, no competencies because it's um, that the human, the interface of the technology somehow gets so simple that even someone without any digital skills can use it immediately. And um, this is a great advantage because um, somehow you need less um, hard digital competencies, like you don't need to program or write code, but it's also the biggest risk because uh, you need a really good background on digital literacy and be aware about the risks and ethics. So it's, it's really, it's opened a whole new landscape that came into that competencies also teachers need to know when they use technology with the tool technology. It's not that they didn't know before didn't to know what ethic is, but now using even a technology tool that runs on your cell phone as Sometimes it was a little bit like social media, but now you even have to be more aware of it. And I think this is a great opportunity because um, that technology is easier to use, that you don't, that you need less hard digital competences, but um, then you need more social, ethical, and soft background competencies. And um, yeah, I think then it's also, as you mentioned before, that um, um, that is so versatile. So um, even if you talk about immigrants and that there are a lot of now students in class that don't even speak the language and they sit in class and somehow have to follow for the teacher to have a translator on the cell phone or that you just can pop it up and just translate it to not one language, not only like in Italy, Italian, English, whatever, but in Chinese, Croatian. So I think this is also a big help because uh, you can communicate and also for the students, it feels more just integrated in the class. It's not automated. So basically, um, my opinion or what I experience is that the teachers are very positive about technology, about AI. Teachers that started earlier with technologies, like from my experience, STEM teachers, are uh, more easily integrated or switched immediately to use also AI tools because they feel already confident. Um, then language teachers, for them it was very easy to use the translator or um, applications like that, but um, all the teachers that we encountered or we spoke with, they are well aware about the risks and the ethics and um, starting already to um, think also very critical. But fortunately, it's not the fear. It's not that they're trying to avoid it. And I think also as a community, since we are talking for years, as everyone said, uh, for many approaches, even if you look at the STEM, but also for technologies, I think we also arrived at this point very prepared. Because I, I don't know in the last years how many guidelines were published, 
but a very high frequency. Sometimes it's very difficult to keep up with reading because there everyone is publishing, is writing. And I think so, um, hopefully we will be really at a point where um, maybe not to, to run faster than the technology development, but somehow to keep up the pace. This would be just a great success. success. But I think we, for this or to do so, we really need the help also of who's developing these technologies that, um, that for now often are in commercial hands, obviously because it's, it costs to develop them, but, um, and somehow you have to earn all of these costs, but um, I think there should be also more awareness about where these technologies will get to use and have also the awareness if you're producing these tools that there should be also like a branch for education, which somehow um, just um, takes a responsibility that not all the responsibility is on the teacher side, but um, that also who produces the technologies and just say, okay, you can use it in the classroom or if it's used for children on, on the cell phone, takes this responsibility. Many thanks. Um, can I come back to one point you mentioned, uh, which is quite an optimistic or positive note that you've brought into this. I mean, the teachers' perceptions about AI seem to be very optimistic, positive uh, about it. Um, what do teachers feel like they need to be able to address and deal with AI right now? Did your research indicate anything about that? What type of support do they need? Yeah, I support mostly um, the community. They really um, need the support or that the coaching that someone is there and just um, stay by their side when they're approaching. They need um, learning scenarios that they could put in practice for the first steps. So uh, like materials that they can trust. So, um, and also this is a very, I think, big point that we already have so many materials, um, there are so many learning scenarios, so many best practice, but if you try to, to find something for very concrete, for your discipline, for your age, for your children, for your class, so it's, it's very difficult to find them because they are not ordered, there are so many projects out there, everyone is producing, but then um, after when the project is ended, for example, all the materials are just disappeared. You can reach the website even if the content was interesting. So I think also on a community level, it could be um, helpful just try to make all these materials, all these approaches more accessible to teachers. And um, yeah, for them that uh, another big part is the networking to do coaching um, peer coaching with teachers that they create a community and um, obviously also from the policy side um, so this is like from 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 the bottom up but also from the up to, to the teacher from the policy side I think um, with the guidelines now released from the European Commission I think also the countries somehow should start to try to put them in practice and give also concrete advice because okay. what the teacher asking uh, is concrete help. They yeah. tell me, okay, but I, what should I do in the classroom? Mm. So Indeed. Well, we'll come back to that uh, more towards the end. Um, so many thanks, Jessica. Um, Manuel, you said you wanted to add yeah, one point. I forgot to mention one point that I think it's important to, to highlight. Uh, we have to uh, consider also how this kind of technology change the way in which the students learn. So we have to uh, uh, consider this aspect and it's not uh, only the teaching practice that change by uh, themselves, but uh, also the change that uh, we have from uh, the way in which the students uh, learn. And uh, another point that's important to, to, to point out is that uh, Large language models is just the beginning of uh, a new history. Uh, on the scene, there are already uh, some other technologies that are developed on top of these models, and they uh, are able to 
uh, solve some of the, uh, the limitation that w this kind of technology has, uh, particularly in respect with uh, the logical and quantitative reasoning. I want just to mention one software that is uh, a public uh, uh, open source software on GitHub. It's a very little project, but uh, uh, it received a, a lot of attention. It's called uh, AutoGPT. And uh, uh, it's able, on uh, using uh, large language models, to uh, uh, auto prompt itself in order to uh, create a plan to fulfill an objective, and also to understand and uh, go into the the network, the, the internet, and analyze web page. So it's just the, the beginning of the history. So we have to uh, take care not not only at what we have now, but what we can have in the future. Indeed, many thanks, Manuel. Um, I'd like to come now to, to you, Anna, um, and, and hear the perspective from the Spanish Ministry of Education. Um, you have quite an extensive and quite innovative teacher training and support program, and I believe you're also working on a strategy on, on AI and education. So can you tell us a bit more about how the Spanish Ministry of Education is addressing AI in their teacher education and training program? Yeah, um, I wanted to, to highlight uh, first two, two main points that has been mentioned by uh, Manuel and, and Jessica. One is the role of teachers and their very active um, part in, in education and in, when teaching students and in the way students uh, learn. And the, the fact that Jessica was mentioning that it's not only AI, but AI understood in a broader sense of the, we need, or teachers need, we all need as citizens, right? Because we all use AI. But um, understood within the development of the digital competence of teachers. So in this sense, um, from the, um, the Spanish Ministry of Education, we have developed uh, different actions to address these topics. Um, and starting in this point of the digital skills, we already had a, a reference framework common for teachers, digital competence of teachers. It dated back of 2017, and it was updated uh, last year. It follows European guidelines and frameworks such as Dishcom, Dishcom Edu, as well. And it, this is a, a starting point for teachers to see where they are and what they should they should get or how they could improve. And within the framework, it includes aspects related to programming, computational thinking, artificial intelligence, and ethics, which is something very important, which had not been addressed before in other in other frameworks. Um, we also it was also mentioned uh, yesterday in the keynote. Um, that there was a lack of uh, knowledge, um, uh, frameworks, guidance, and uh, curriculum. So we also tried to, to address this and with the um, update uh, again uh, of the law in education, new LAM law, it also included aspect related to computational thinking from the very early years at school, childhood education to secondary school. It is included in the curriculum now. And yeah, so um, then we have designed um, a national digital uh, plan to address this. And I, I'll just focus on what we are talking about today. But it, it's um, our digital plan in terms of education and training for teacher, teachers um, has two main axes. One is investment in equipment, which is necessary for school students and teachers. They need equipment and to use tools. But uh, they, they need um, a company. As, as Jessica was mentioning, teachers, they cannot feel they are alone. They need to feel supported. So if you just give them the, tool, the tools and the, 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 the screen, the devices, it's not enough for them. So the second uh, main axe of the, of the plan is uh, investment in, in training and to accompany teachers and uh, to, to be with them. There we also have the, fi uh, the figure of the mentor, of a person who is going to be with them at school, uh, specialized in digital. Uh, they, they have, uh, they, they have a, a high digital competence, they're experienced teachers, and they know about these about this new um, topics arising from the context. So um, this is something that we really try to, to follow in all of the, the, the national actions. Um, in terms of training, specific training on AI, it's something new 
but it's something that it's it's been it's it's new. It's it's a hot topic today, but it's been uh, there for a while. Um, within our training, we have uh, open and massive courses. We have had two NOOCs related to AI, but in more general terms, uh, AI for well-being and in your everyday life, which is aimed at teachers. But it's like the first step for them to understand that AI is all around us and to see the potential of AI. Uh, we had around uh, 600 uh, participants for each of the NOOC. We have had three editions already. And um, we've launched a new um, MOOC. It is a bit longer, 25 hours duration, about uh, the use of AI in, in education. Um, this time we addressed AI in the sense of we need to learn to use AI. It's not just to learn how to use the tool, but we need to see and to develop the competencies to use it in a positive way, in a meaningful way when teaching and for our students. So within the MOOC there were modules. One module was learning for the AI and learning about the AI. So we clearly differentiated these two parts. Um, the last module was the implementation of these tools in the classroom. So this is the last part that some, some, sometimes it is missed and teachers need. They need the last part of the implementation. So what, how can I use it in my classroom and how, it, how it's going to, to, to work? And since it is open and it's more social, they also had the opportunity to share practices with other colleagues. So it was a very popular. We had like 2,000 um, enrollment in this MOOC and people were very satisfied with it. It was the first edition. And apart from these two specific trainings, um, we also have um, our action uh, called the School of Computational Thinking and Artificial Intelligence. It was an exper uh, experimentation uh, policy. It was a four-year program. It started in 2018. It finished um, last year, this year. Uh, it was a bit longer. And here, we had a total of 1,000 teachers selected um, from different regions in Spain. And when they participated, they were able to choose their own paths. So we had different modules um, about computational thinking, robotics, coding, programming, artificial intelligence. They could choose their own paths and at different levels. It didn't mind if they were um, intermediate, advanced, or just starting. Um, and after this first part of training, it was followed by a second part, which was implementation in the classroom again. So they had a tutor who guided them on how to implement this in the classroom. Then they shared how this had worked in the classroom. And then we had a third part, which was a re research. So with these specific groups and teachers, uh, there was a research on the impact of this in students, if they had improved or not in the area they were developing. And then there was a, a shared uh, a bank of good practices that could be used by other teachers as well. Uh, this is finished right now because it was an experimentation thing and it was very limited. But uh, it was very successful, so we thought it, would be, it could be useful to have it open at national level to all schools in Spain. And we've launched a new initiative called uh, Código Escuela 4.0, School Code 4.0. Um, and for this, we have an investment of 300 million euro, which has already been transferred to regions in Spain because competencies in education are transferred to regions, so they spend the money uh, themselves. And, but the, the thing is they need to spend it again in two main lines, in training for teachers and again in the guidance. So they will need, they will have uh, equipment and also training and mentoring to implement actions in the classroom. So, so far I, I see, we, we see the slide behind me. This is the uh, INTEF. Um, this is the, by the way, it's, it's the unit of the ministry in charge of teacher training and educational technologies. Code INTEF is the section devoted to these new emerging technologies, uh, artificial intelligence, robotics, programming. You, you find here, it is open, you find different actions, open resources, good, good practices, um, researches, uh, publications, training related to these topics. And you can see in the, now the Código Escuela initiatives. So far, there is just one, a publication 
um, which gathers information di from different regions about training on this topic, how it is embedded in the curriculum. And soon we will have uh, a section as well with different training again and how regions are developing the, the action. So if you have, you, you have the QR code as well. Some things are translated into English, the, the framework as well, the digital competence framework for teachers, it's, it's translated into English as well. Um, yeah, that, that, that's the main thing. I think we will Thank develop you. more about yeah. other things. But very on. quick follow-up question for you, mm -hmm. Anna. I mean, having listened to Mark West and the focus on, or the advocating focus on basic literacies, uh, and also, Manuel, I think you mentioned sort of social emotional skills becoming more important. I mean, how is that reflected in the strategy? Where does that come in? Is that something that's uh, taken up? Well, it is actually included within the framework of the digital competence. It is something that we cannot forget. I mean, digital competence is not just the competence to use a tool and that's it. We need to, to think about the implication it will have, the impact, and in society as well. So within the training offer, we try, we try to address these needs as well. And it's something that is changing because society changes and new technology as well. So um, we try to, with the collaboration of the regions as well, we try to address needs and these new problems, well, problems or issues which are part of society as well. And we've got other NOOCs, MOOCs and tutor courses addressing these uh, topics which are part of uh, the digital world but not just specific of the digitalization. So we've got some NOOCs and MOOCs related to the well-being, IA in your everyday life, ethics, which is something uh, very important. So it is included in all the actions. We always have this place for the, the other, not so technical aspect. Okay, many thanks. Um, so this has uh, been very interesting to hear about the teacher training, so continuous teacher training activities that you're offering. Um, Noiza, can we uh, now come to you? Because you work in uh, pre-service uh, teacher education uh, with uh, new young student teachers um, who, who want to enter the profession. Um, in light of the development around AI, has this already, do you see this reflected already in what you do with your students, um, how you teach them, what you focus on in your teaching? Uh, yes, we have been trying to address AI for a while now, and um, we need to do it because I see this as a university responsibility. We are promoting training for teachers who will be teaching for the next, I would expect to be like 35, 40 years, but it will be like 50, 55 or more. So we really need to prepare them for the future and we need to make them see that that future will change a lot. Uh, I would like to share with you a project that we have been doing the last year and again we did this, this year. And what uh, the challenge that we pre present to them was to identify the desktop and the web-based tools that they use and try to replace them with AI tools. So they are the ones responsible for seeing what is there and what are their benefits and also what are the risks in using that. And for, for, for focusing on these two aspects, we have a, a black list and we have a white list also, you can see it there. So what is the black list? That black list on your uh, upper left, your left corner, you have the, a number of tools that are not doing what they promised or had changed to the pay modes in the last th three months. Okay, so we have been doing this this semester. We started in September, and these tools are already proving to be not so good as, as they promised, or they changed to paid modes. That's it. Sometimes this is the the the, um, the business model they use. It's it's fun and it's good. You can use it for a short period of time, and then you have to pay for it. And so we move it to the black list. And we also have a white list. And the white list is foc focusing on tools or frameworks that are really focusing on ethics on AI. One of them I can uh, refer to you is AI Fairness 360, and it's an open source toolkit that, that can help anyone examine, report, mitigate the discrimination and bias in machine learning uh, models. And they are exploring it, trying to see what is it about. And we have been doing this collectively, so it's a, it's a platform that we use. The platform is not relevant, but, um, but it, it is in a certain way because I had to pay for it. And I, I did it to make my students become aware that 
if you are not paying for the product, you are the product. And this is something that we should be aware. And this platform is used collectively. We share it. We all of the, all of us are able to edit it. And um, the idea is to make them see that they need to do it collaboratively. This is not something that we should do alone because it takes a lot of time. And also, we learn much from each other than you can do alone. Another thing that I would like to, to, to say about this, this little project that we have been doing is that we do it as research. And it's really important for teachers to understand that they need to be researcher in their own practice, in their own schools. And uh, ICT and I2 tools, they really require from us that mindset of a researcher. We have a problem, we have to have a method to deal with that problem, and we have to find solutions, and we have to be aware that that solution will have a, a lifetime span. We have to re-look at things regularly. So this is a project, and I present, to do, I present this to them as a project. They have to continue doing it, and it is research-based. And um, to finalize, what I like to share with you is that most of our students, and they will be future secondary school teachers, they use AI, but they do not think about AI as a tool that can be used by them for their teaching. And this is something that we really need to put in the agenda, in the university's agenda. We have to make universities and school of education become aware that it is important that they take their role in the process that are happening in today's reality, which is a very changing world, because sometimes university, they lack a little bit behind all this technological e evolution that is happening, and this cannot be the case anymore, from my point of view. Thank you. Many thanks, Noza. Quick follow-up question. I mean, based on what you just said at the end, um, do you use AI tools yourself when you prepare your teacher education activities? Are there yeah, any yeah. tips for other teachers? I do it, you? and I do, and I pay for it again. Mm -hmm. I yes, <laughs> because it's very important to look at for it. For example, what is ChatGPT that you are not paying for it, and the one that you have once you pay for it. It's very different. It's very very different, and. I see that a lot of schools and a lot of teachers, they always prefer to use free tools. And I do see that to be a very critical mistake to be continue happening in the future because of all the things that Mark told us about. Yeah, and I don't know how school budgets are prepared for it, but I do see the need for this to be part of the agenda. If you are asking me if all my colleagues are also prepared for it, I prefer not to answer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, we'll leave it at that. Th thanks, Anoza. Um, still about initial teacher education, though. Um, I mean, you've, you've shared this project and your own initiatives in addressing this with your students, but um, what are your thoughts on maybe some more systematic changes in the way initial teacher education is organized or in the curricula that you're uh, addressing in as part of your, your education, teacher education there? Um, what systemic changes would you like to see uh, to, to be able to be ready for this new situation? A lot, a lot, I would say. <laughs> but for instance, one thing that uh, I do say, see as relevant and is not yet happening is ICT or AI or technical tools and the mastery of them and the required digital skills to be a proficient user of them to be part of the curricula. It's not something that you think that should be transversely approached through the entire curricula. I do see the need to have this as a specific course because it, it is critical. And if it is critical, you have to be sure that it is and it is being addressed. And sometimes universities do not provide that type of courses. Uh, I, as I said, I teach for future secondary school teachers. And in secondary schools, this might be something that happens. But when you are thinking about kindergartens or primary future school teachers, it is not happened at all. 
And this is critical, I, I, I would say. Because these ones, these teachers, will be the ones that can really help students, future citizens, become aware of all the ethical issues and all the critical thinking that you need to do around using uh, ICT and IEI tools. <coughs> if a teacher is not a critical user, the students will not be able to be critical users. And if we are expecting schools to promote schools, the real schools, the schools where they be teaching, if we are expecting these schools to teach future teachers, at least when they are there, they are already teachers, to, to, to teach them this type of skills, I do not see this to be possible. Because as soon as they go inside the school, they don't have time for anything. They are completely absorbed by all the system and all the uh, teaching issues and all the things around dealing with parents and managing classes. So it is a responsibility that universities need to address. This is one of the issues. The other one I would say is that, some, uh, I think all of us talk about, we, that is the emotional skills. This is not also being addressed in the curricula, initial teacher education, it is not addressed. Some, some university, some school of education has been trying to focus on that, but this is not the rule. These are the just exception, exceptions. And uh, uh, I do see that my students, they really lack base, basic knowledge and profound knowledge on that topic. So if I have to select two main issues, I would select these ones. But if I have more time, I can find <laughs> much more thoughts. Let's see if we can yeah, find some more time at the end. But many thanks for those very clear answers. Um, OK, so we've talked a bit about the sort of potential systemic changes that would be needed in initial teacher education. Let's look a bit also at the policy level. And I'd like to come back to you, Manuel, and, and Jessica on this. Um, now, Manuel, you, you, as part of one of your papers, you wrote this manifesto about the new yep. role of teachers. And there you write that um, raising awareness about this new role is a must-do action for all national education systems. But the key question is really, how do we achieve how? that? Um, <laughs> so what advice would you have for the policymakers here today on, on what needs to yeah. be done at policy level to ensure that this new role of teachers becomes understood yeah. and, and widespread? You know, it's a very big question. It's not easy to answer. Anyway. Uh, also because uh, uh, I think all of us, most of us, uh, feel like a bit disappointed sometimes for the, the, the resistance that we uh, uh, leave uh, when we want to uh, provide innovation in school and there is a big gap between uh, how the world is changing and how the school remain in a very uh, stand position. So uh, I think that uh, uh, we have to focus on uh, at least on three aspects. The first one is that uh, we have to uh, not uh, impose uh, innovation from the top, but we have to involve the main actors, so teachers and students and families. And we have to learn also from other fields of, of science, uh, for example, from uh, uh, the new uh, uh, the new advancement in uh, social research, I refer to uh, theory and change, and uh, uh, specifically on in uh, social technical systems. So we have to uh, create the condition starting from uh, a very scientific approach, and not by uh, by just seeing what emerged from from the bottom. Uh, the second point is, of course, teacher education. Uh, we have to increase the awareness of, of teacher uh, about uh, not only the risk and the potential, but how uh, AI works, uh, because it's important to understand. Uh, there is a question that I made uh, in, a, in our course in, uh, in the framework of uh, artificial in, uh, intelligence uh, for and by a teacher I4T project. I uh, always ask it, if uh, uh, the response that uh, uh, ChatGPT or BARD uh, give to the user are just uh, keep it from uh, a huge database of uh, uh, question response uh, couples, and uh, quite uh, half percent of, of the uh, of the respondents uh, say that uh, it's uh, uh, it works in in this way. So. 
uh, they don't understand the, the generative power of this technology. And so we have to, to work on, uh, on uh, increase this kind of our awareness. And the third and uh, more difficult uh, aspect is uh, uh, to create the space for experimentation, safe space. We had uh, a nice talk with uh, Noza. I think that also uh, uh, student teacher are uh, one of these uh, uh, safe space in which we can experiment a lot, uh, the implication of AI. But uh, I think we have also to uh, provide teacher, to train teacher also to uh, uh, a sort of uh, research mindset in order to give, uh, uh, give them the power to, uh, to experiment and to, to try this kind of technology. And uh, maybe I have to add uh, another point uh, that is completely out of the scope of this, uh, of this panel. I think that we have also to uh, uh, restate again the, the role of uh, the body the, the, in, the, in the learning process. So we have to create some space, some, uh, for, I don't know, uh, technologically free space in which starting from uh, the, the, uh, the, the role of the body, the, the social aspect, and uh, all this kind of stuff. I think it's really important also to have a uh, good result in, in the other fields. Many thanks. Um, yeah. uh, Manuel, can I, can I bring in uh, Jessica here? What's your take on this? Um, what type of policy level changes would you like to see um, in order to facilitate? I mean, you've done teacher trainings and, and work closely with teachers that would facilitate that work? I, I don't think if the policy should change. I think the policy is quite in place. Um, it's, it's somehow where everything sums up and we are talking about it, about the teacher that somehow has to do so much, has to teach, has to do lifelong learning, has to be a researcher, has to stay in class, has to do assessment, answer to, um, there are the parents that are maybe just worried that uh, you didn't have made, uh, didn't, not even read the page 120 to 240 in the textbook, and if their children really learn everything that is written there. So I think it's, it's really a cultural shift, and this is why it's so difficult. This is why we are for years talking about how to change education, and spending money on it, and it's, I don't say that it's wasted, it's not, but as some it's, it's a very huge step. So this institution school that is like, it is like for about 100 years and didn't change so much. Um, I think really we had to rethink it and it's, it's a very, you have to be brave to do it and you really need space, experimental space, but then <coughs> the experimental space and uh, somehow involves your future citizens. So you have also a responsibility, if you want to do your experimentation, that you're doing it with the future lives of your students you have in class. Because, and this is where it comes back to the teacher, but in the, in the end, even if the teacher wanted to experiment, but he also made to take, take sure that the students that he has in class are prepared for, this to, for the future or they are also prepared for the content or which they have to answer when they go to university or when they go to the next school level. So um, <coughs> I think it's the school system because it's a system. So there are so many things that have to work together starting from the head of school, the school communities of teacher, even the parents that they have to support it. So I think it's, it's, it's not only the policy or it's not only that the school head has to do something, it's, it's really society and culture, culture have to do something, have to think about how we want to learn, what it means to be learning, what is a school, where has to be, a school has to be, has it be a building, do I have every day be in this building at 8 o'clock, 7.30 to learn something or can I learn also in another space? And if I can learn in another space, how can I access this learning to make it somehow also useful for me? Because it's important that learning is assessed because I, as a learner, I need to have my access. It's, it's not that I, without these gratitude, 
Dine, when it came to emotion, with these emotion also to share what you have learned and to put it in practice and have a place, a safe place where you can experiment and put it in practice. So it's really, for this I think it's so hard to answer and why we took so long. Nonetheless, that we have so motivated teachers, we have so many teachers and they are so good in class, they're doing amazing things. And somehow, some also, I met teachers that they didn't even look at the textbook because they know, okay, I know what I want to teach my children and I guarantee that they have the skills and the knowledge when they leave my class that they can get in any other middle school, for example. So, but you have to be brave to this and know your content very much. So this is always where you came to that some, as a teacher, you also need to combine, in this case, technology, the pedagogical content, how do you teach something, how do you want to use this technology to teach a certain, certain subject. So you need always to be aware of these three areas. Many thanks, Jessica. Uh, well, big questions that need to be answered, cultural shifts that need to be achieved. Uh, not an easy task for sure. Um, can I come quickly before we open the floor for questions from the audience to, to Anna Neuser? Um, what type of policy level or cultural shifts do you feel are necessary to ensure that the work that you are doing as a teacher training organization and as an initial teacher education organization uh, can better prepare and support teachers um, in this changing landscape? You want to answer? Um, well, I think. Um, we need first, we need, we need to understand what we've been talking about, and Mark also mentioned it. Um, we are talking about AI is, it, machines, but we need the human part. We, we need a human hand within these machines and this technology. So it, it is important to, to see students and teachers and everybody, uh, because we use the technology and AI, uh, to see uh, us not as a mere consumer, but as a creator, so that's why we need to understand how it works, to, to uh, and to be critical. Then, so uh, taking this as, as as a basis to develop um, policies and actions, I think it's also important to to take into account the the long term because it's something that is changing all the time, and an action which has started this year can can be um, all, can be old and for next year because there are new needs and new and new technology as well so it is important to set um, actions based on, on on the needs real needs do we need to be able to 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 distinguish what the real needs of teachers are and then establish actions in in our case we are trying to to establish it in a long term um, we, we, oh, I talked about this uh, framework we have for digital competence. So now the next step is we, we are asking teachers to accredit their competence. So we are going one step further. So we, we need teachers to be aware where they are and where they need to go. And also when developing uh, initiatives, we also need to take into account this, the sense of, uh, of company, the sense that it's not just investing in equipment, new machines, new technology, it is to be uh, to support teachers um, and offering them training, people around them, mentors, uh, the safe space they need at, at school uh, to be able to implement um, new things and I don't know if it um, will go with the next question, but uh, now that I have Noisa here and she's going to answer as well, uh, it's also the collaboration with ITE is important because these pre-service teachers are going to be future teachers and we're going to train them. So if we don't follow a, a common line, it's going to be very difficult then to, to see, for them to see that there is a, a continuity, to, to see that what they learned before is going to be useful later on. and. Uh, having uh, taken, I mean, I have in mind the framework again. When you are in one level and you want to go to the next level, there is a step f f further, right? So when you are a pre-service teacher, you don't have the opportunity uh, to experiment with your classroom and your students. So uh, let's go with them and give them the opportunity to experiment what they've learned before with their uh, with their students, with other colleagues at school, with other professionals as well. Great, many thanks. No, is there anything you want uh, to add? Policy level changes, is that the question? Yeah. Um, I would say that maybe uh, a change in the type and tone of this course would be good. Because what I see is um, 
policy level speech about AI to be not so well informed for one <laughs> from one aspect and to be or fa based on hyper fear from one perspective or to see uh, see it as the promised solution for everything and so I think that we need to be to take a step back and really um, reflect about the topic but giving time for experimentation to happen. So I see the need to change the tone and the, <laughs> and the content of the discourses. The other thing is that we all understand the need for um, creating better conditions for teacher education, pre-service and in-service education. So these conditions are critical. But saying that, and also understanding that the, the role and all the responsibilities that teachers have nowadays has been increasing on the opposite the number of years that we have for initial teacher education are reducing and the, the time that teachers have in schools for engaging in continuous professional development is also decreasing so it doesn't make many sense to me that we are facing the problem and becoming aware of the problem, but not providing the proper conditions for teachers to solve the problems that are by the end of the end of the line on their hands. So better conditions for initial teacher education, more time, I think that more time is needed. It's not the opposite, it's more time. And again, more time for teachers to engage in initial in in-service training is also very relevant. Not only the quality of the training that are provided to them is really important. Not only making sure it is updated, is relevant, is contextualized, but also that they have time to absorb, to apply, to reflect about the the training that we are provided to them. Because we see that sometimes the level of impact is not what we expect it to be. But we don't provide conditions for that impact to happen in their practices. So, thank you. Many thanks, Noza. Unfortunately, we don't have more time. I've just, uh, my colleague signaled me that we have to come to a close. Um, but we do want to give the opportunity for maybe at least one uh, question from the audience. I see a hand coming up there in the back. I think it's coming. Thank you for your discussion. It was very interesting. I wanted to ask about data protection regulation. Uh, how that, that, that one has actually affected those teacher trainings because that was the main obstacle we had in Estonia that uh, you were talking about the critical thinking uh, and how the, the teachers have to be critical users then the students can be critical users but in fact 70% of those environments that are up there on the board they are banned uh, for under age 18, or there is a, a need for parental consent uh, to use them over 13 years of uh, students. So how did you tackle that issue in your trainings? Yeah, that's a, a very important question, yeah. Um, uh, my students, they are uh, uh, adults, okay, so I don't have that problem. But what we did as one of the main steps was to create a specific email account for these tools to be able to use by them, okay? Because, for, for instance, uh, all of these tools will be taking information from the users. That's how AI function, okay? We need to feed them in order for it to function. So what we did is trying to avoid as much as we can <laughs> to really contributing to the system. And um, we also make, make them aware that um, this is something that they need to critically think inside their schools. 
when they will be teaching and they should not do it alone because it's not a problem of one specific teacher. This is a policy that schools need to think about. And of course, governments need to help schools think about. Another thing that I would like to, ta uh, to, to, to use the time that the, uh, the, the, this question provides to me is the fact that my students, they are ICT or computer science teachers, okay? So I do see that they specifically have a critical role inside of schools. Because many primary school teachers, many English teachers or history te teachers, they do not feel confident enough to take any decisions about what tools should I have, should I use or not. So I do see that ICT teachers can have a very important role inside of school today. And when I say an important role, it's not managing systems. It's not taking part taking care of a computer that are not running. I'm really thinking about helping schools define policies and re reviewing that policies often enough for this to be able to, to function well. Uh, anyone would like to answer Actually, that? Yeah, in that? want to add to that? Yeah, about data protection. I was thinking about schools, and I, I don't know if we have to um, just um, stop on school level. I think this is something that needs policy. I think this is something that should involve who's producing this software. And um, as they did, I think, in Great Britain, that they developed uh, an application especially for schools. I think it's it's this is a safe space we need not the data literacy of teachers, yes, but um, since these software are evolving so fast, it's very difficult. It could be work alone, the lifetime work, to keep up updated and be aware what data really these applications are taking from you and how they use it. So I think it's also a, res a responsibility. Who is developing this software? It's like you do it also for medical use, that they have their software you can use for school. You can pay for it. But then I think on a, it's something that, on a high level, should also guarantee that you can use this software, and this software are protecting your data, and you can use it for education. So it's something like that. And not talking about how they should be updated, and, but it's another mm. thing. <laughs> OK, thank you. Um, I don't know, do we have time for a second question, maybe? Yeah. yeah? Any, any further questions for the panel? No, I think everybody's eager to get to the coffee, <laughs> the coffee break. So many thanks to all of you, uh, and thanks for the question to the audience.